Okay, so close to two years ago, I came out with a list ranking all the solo studio Eminem albums released at that time. Since then, Marshall Mathers has unleashed two more albums onto the world, Revival and Kamikaze. And I've been asked where they stack up amongst the others. So this is sort of my redux on all of the past and new albums with some fresh perspectives. But keep in mind, this is all opinion and you're free to disagree with my choices. So here we go. Oh, and uh, real quick, I have to say, while the positions of the choices may have changed since the last time, the one thing that hasn't is that I'm still not including Infinite. Uh, watch the original video to find out why. Encore. I don't care what anyone says. Encore will always be the worst Eminem album. He could come out with an album tomorrow where he just farts on the mic for 40 minutes, and it would still be better than Encore. There are maybe two okay songs on the entire album. But out of 20 tracks, that's absolutely inexcusable. Eminem gets a few sympathy points because of the bad place in life he was in at the time of making the album, but that aside, it's awful. Plain and simple. Revival. This will probably be a controversial decision depending on what side of the rift you're on. Some Eminem fans really love this record, but the majority that I've seen hate this crap. And... I'm on that side. My initial problems with the Revival were just that it was extremely disappointing. Acting as a follow-up to the Marshall Mathers LP2 and a Shady XV collaboration, Revival had a lot to live up to and was hyped up beyond recognition. Taking my own personal letdown out of the equation, Revival just leaves too little of an impact to really care about. Check out my full review for a more in-depth look. Relapse. Relapse suffers from problems left behind by Encore. So we've got some annoying voices and immature lyrics that are more abound than normal for Mr. Mathers. Relapse and Revival were very close for me, but Relapse just barely wins out over Revival, most likely due to some nostalgia I have for it. The first half of the album is pretty okay, and I can vibe to it alright, but the latter half just falls off and isn't really worth much. The Eminem Show. This is what I consider a really solid all-around Eminem album. I think it discusses themes of fame in the music industry better than most other Eminem albums, because of the fact that it was made at the right time in his career. It's a good album with more songs I like than I dislike. Some tracks are a little too sluggish and boring, while others are straight bumpers. Overall, it's the most basic Eminem album in his discography. It hits all the right notes and leaves before it overstays its welcome. Kamikaze Kamikaze's position may drop in the future, but at the time I'm releasing this video, it's at number 5 for me. While the basis behind Kamikaze is getting back at all the haters after Revival, creating a scenario where Eminem is able to go nuts and give us the high gear lyricism we want, it kind of leaves us wondering if it's worth it because M, I'm sorry, but Revival sucked and the rhymes related to Revival just don't resonate with me. Theoretically, it should rank lower because of that. However, I've been developing a theory that suggests that Eminem secretly knows that he has no grounds to complain about the hand he was dealt and is simply stirring the pot for positive reinforcement for his fame. The perfect example was his beef with MGK, an opportunity to grow more in fame and assert his dominance over new age rappers of our modern times. A kamikaze pilot literally kills themselves in the hopes of achieving better goals of the whole of their identity, i.e. Japan, possibly standing as a metaphor for Eminem, putting out an album designed to chop his own head off in the hopes of creating more buzz for himself and more deeper analysis of his lyrics. Even if all that was the case though, it doesn't change the mediocrity of some lines and how dated and childish a lot of it will come off in the future. And that's why it's ranked right in the middle. While the Slim Shady LP is magnificent in so many ways, I will always cherish it and the many memories I have with it, but while I enjoy the authenticity in his flow and raw cleverness in his rhymes, the album lacks organized finesse and his untapped potential is sometimes irritatingly apparent. Lines that would normally end in a more clever way with older versions of Eminem end very immaturely. Some songs hinge their appeal on what we now see as meme rapping, making songs that lack lyrical quality in favor of a overly, overtly uh, ridiculous scenarios in an attempt to make the audience laugh, which does work often throughout the album. It's just sometimes it's a little in your face. The song My Fault, standing as my main example of what could be wrong with the entirety of the Slim Shady LP. Recovery has moved up a lot since the last list I made, and that's mostly because I've given in to my love for the album. 
It should be no secret at this point for anyone that knows me that Recovery is my own personal favorite Eminem album. I have a lot of nostalgia for it, considering all of the hit singles off the album were popping up around the time my ears were being tuned into rap music. In fact, Not Afraid was the first Eminem song I ever heard. No Love was my first intro to Lil Wayne, and who could forget Love the Way You Lie, a music video that still stands as one of the most viewed videos on YouTube. Further study into recovery reveals a rapper who had matured and actually wanted to actively be the best because he knew it was what he was best at. It's the first album where Eminem leaves behind the Slim Shady persona and operates with no limitations, no gimmicks, and most importantly, no drugs. The only influence he had was making up for the mistakes he had made in the past, whether it be his real-life issues or professional ones. Are there problems? Yes. Sometimes the problems and stories Eminem tells can sometimes feel like overbearing complaining. But if you didn't want to hear about the man's struggle and resurgence, why would you listen to an album called Recovery? Despite its problems, it has tight, fast, and clever lyrics, poignant reflection, and development of the artist. What more can a guy ask for? The Marshall Mathers LP. It's the year 2000. Y2K fell through, the first X-Men film hit the big screen, and people weren't affected by post-9-11 fear. And on top of all that, the rising star, Eminem, dove headfirst into superstardom when he released what is often considered one of the greatest rap albums of all time. It held the record for fastest-selling solo artist album for 15 years until Adele broke it with her album, 25. Last time around, I capped this record at number one because, across the board, it's mostly flawless. So what changed if my overall opinion of the quality is the same? Well, I decided to look at the entirety of the Eminem albums as a timeline distinctly split into two eras, simply referred to as the old and new Eminem. Beginning with the Slim Shady LP and ending with Kamikaze, with Relapse acting as the transition between the two eras. Among the old Eminem era, we have some of the man's best work, but the one that stands above them all is undoubtedly the Marshall Mathers LP. However, that era of Eminem metaphorically died after Encore. We all need to accept that. Just because the new era is different doesn't mean it sucks, and just because the Marshall Mathers LP was the best of his old stuff doesn't mean it's the best of all his albums overall, as a collective. It's very close, though. I have to make that very, very clear. I have to stress the Marshall Mathers LP is great, but repeated listens leave me feeling like there's just one thing missing, a certain refining of the art he hadn't quite mastered, something he himself has admitted before, but just a mere 13 years later, we would receive his crowning achievement, the Marshall Mathers LP 2. If you thought that the Marshall Mathers LP was perfect and could not be topped, well, I think the sequel not only captures the same magic of the original, but builds on top of it, ultimately creating a richer experience. It's an album that takes all the great things from recovery and masters it. His storytelling and wordplay is as on point as a scorekeeper. Themes and ideas explored in the previous LP are used again here as means to explore more themes and create many parallel metaphors that create a series of layered and deep songs with deep and layered lyrics. The beat production is pretty awesome and the feature work, well, scares, is done very well. From start to end, the whole album is a demonstration on how far he had come and the full extent of his prowess. I mean, it has rap god. Need I say more other than the Marshall Mathers LP 2? is the best of the Eminem albums, and the one I recommend to everyone. I just hope it's not the end of the really great Eminem records. Kamikaze was fun, but it was situational. Well anyway, that's the list. I hope you guys enjoyed, or were at least intrigued at in my opinion. If so, let me know what you think below. <laughs> I'll also leave links to my revival review and my previous album ranking if you're interested in my old thoughts. Take it easy. And have a good night.